Yesterday, once again, we awoke to the terrible news that one of our best and bravest had been killed in Afghanistan. This time it was Special Forces Trooper Jason Brown, a 29-year-old lad from Perth, gunned down in a firefight with insurgents. And again we find ourselves asking whether it's worth it. Should we be sacrificing young Australian lives for a war on the other side of the world that seems to have no end and that very few people even understand? Well, I've just spent some time with a courageous young bloke, a commando and a comrade in arms to Jason in the Special Forces. And he makes a powerful argument for our troops to stay put. As you'll see, Private Damien Tomlinson is far more entitled to an opinion than most. It looks a bit like an ad for Coca-Cola or Calvin Klein. Uh, how good a day is this? 20-somethings on the move, cool and unquenchably confident. Today's a bit of R&R &R for Private Damien Tomlinson and his beautiful Brazilian girlfriend, Letitia. It's so great to be home. He's unstoppable and he loves a challenge. A fitness fanatic, Damo hits the gym and the pool every day. So down the Perisher slopes, he suddenly switched from skiing to snowboarding. And it's his first day. That is a fearless individual. I will, I will give him that. Are you OK, darling? Yeah, it's no big deal. What makes this likeable larrikin so exceptional is he's got no legs. They were blown off in Afghanistan by a Taliban mine, a roadside blast that should have been fatal. You can still feel itches between your toes. Do you miss them? Yeah, a little bit, I guess. I don't get smelly socks anymore, no <laughs> blisters. Probably won't roll an ankle in the near future, which is good. But yeah, I don't know, I really, really don't notice it. I try not to think about it. I think it's one of those things that it's a, it's a mental game the whole time, which is, I think, one that you've, you leave yourself no option but to win. So, I mean, in that mental, that mental game, you can't let it get on top of you. So if I sit there and sort of, oh, well, I miss my legs or something like that, I'll, I'll stop thinking about something that I have to do that's in front of me. So you were here for this ceremony? Yeah. Now spend yeah, five minutes with this bloke yeah. and you'll see that he's yeah, certainly yeah. not ordinary. Not that That's why he joined the 2nd Commando yeah. Regiment, a clandestine band of brothers. You know, right. Until tonight, no you pictures of them on the battlefield, no names and no faces, except for the fallen heroes. The truth is, the commandos have suffered more deaths than any other Australian unit in Afghanistan. Why would you want to join the commandos? They're one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. And I think as, as a kid, when you're that age, you really don't look at, at what's, a, what's a dangerous job. You're, I was at that, at that stage of my life, I was trying to find what I'd be suited to. But 16 to 23, what had you been doing? Just knocking about? Yeah, wasting time. <laughs> wasting time, doing those things that kids do, I guess, trying to, trying to sort of find their feet, dropping out of things left, right and centre. And... But you had no direction, no idea what you wanted to do? None. None. I had probably worse than no direction. I think I was going backwards. But... A live wire? Very much a bit of a larrikin, unstoppable and very determined. If he wanted to do something, he made sure he did it. So Damien's parents, Steve, Steve and Di, yeah, were delighted when at 23 he joined the commandos. They thought that the army might even curb his wild ways. I called him a temporary Australian when he was a kid. What did you mean, temporary Australian? Oh, well, he was, you know, he'd ride motorbikes through the bush at a thousand miles an hour and leap over boulders and, you know, do para, um, what? was that stuff we jumped off cliffs and, you know, he just did a whole bunch of stuff that was highly dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Damien's mum and family can laugh and reminisce now that he's safety back home. Until I saw him myself, I couldn't believe it, you know what I mean? So. That April night patrol last year changed his life forever. What do you remember of that night? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. What do you remember last, a couple of days before? Yeah, shadows from days before. But your mates, the blokes who saved your life that night, what do they say about it? There was a lot of dust and obviously debris everywhere. Then I was unrecognisable through it. When they started to slowly patch people up, then they heard a rasping sound coming from near the car. They just thought I was completely unrecognisable. I looked like debris or something like that, and the rasping sound was me trying to breathe. For it would have been a bit like having been attacked with an axe by some mad axe murderer. 
this one here, as you can see, was... Yeah. Damien like, surgeon yeah, Andrew yes, Ellis kind of, yes, says it's a medical like, miracle um, that he survived the carnage. Squeeze as hard as you can. He was bleeding to death. Both his legs were partially amputated. He had uh, significant injuries to his upper limbs. Should he have died? Uh, he was about as close to death row as you could possibly be. Uh, a colonel in the Army Reserve, Dr Ellis has served in Afghanistan himself. It's after midnight, it's dark, there's dust everywhere, there's debris, yeah. they're under fire. Medics! Medics! No, they're, they're in a situation where his mates are having to provide security. They're worried about a second attack on the vehicle. It is dark. I think they did a bloody fantastic job. Despite his terrible injuries, Mum and Dad were just happy to see that their only boy was still alive. It was a mess. Oh, yes, yeah, horrible mess. But, I mean... The smile was still there. The smile was there, and then I knew how lucky we were. You know, we're extremely lucky people. We've still got a son. You know, a couple of guys have been over there, and they've made the ultimate sacrifice. But it's been Damien's rate of recovery that has staggered everybody. Within eight weeks, he was up and walking because he was determined to be on the tarmac for the homecoming of his commando mates, the mates who'd saved his life. I think Damien is probably the, the worst injured we've had so far. Um, Colonel Paul Kenny was Damien's boss in the commandos. And his mates were just amazed. Though The last time they saw him, he was almost dead on the helicopter. Um, so for them, it was really inspirational to see him standing there welcoming him home. An elite bunch of warriors, there are 400 commandos altogether. They're arguably the toughest and the best trained. They're certainly the highest paid soldiers in the Australian Army, along with the SAS. These men are selected not only for their physical abilities, but for their mental strength as well. The, the way I look at what, what happened to me, there's two sort of ways you can look at it. You can either basically bow out and give up, or you can move forward and continue to do like your best at everything that you do. Mm. Damo is a sort of rehab fiend, rebuilding his upper body, <laughs> and flipping into the lap pool like a human seal. That's amazing. I mean, it's just one of, the, one of those things as well that, I don't know, I always, I used to swim a lot in summer. Damo's full leg is worth $70,000. His homemade flipper, about $1.50. His next challenge is to go surfing once again. That's his favorite sport. But like everything he does, it'll be strictly on his terms. There's that, 30 metre stretch where you're on really soft sand entering the water which when you're sliding sort of on your ass is a little bit little bit harder than you'd sort of anticipate when you get down there so and so your dad or a mate carrying you out of the surf up the beach it's out of the question definitely why no nah, you don't need, you don't need help with anything you do I'd walk, I'd walk on my hands to the water before I'd have someone carry me there. It's the same thing when I fall. The last thing I want someone, someone's hand to go down to pick me up, you know what I mean? It's just one of those, one of those guy things, I think. <laughs> like surfing, Damien can no longer ski. But where there's a will, there's a way. A quick change of legs. Um, is that too tight? <laughs> but he's out there, only this time, he's surfing the snow. Damien's probably the most disabled person that I've dealt with. What we need to do is try to get your body across the snowboard. Peter Higgins coaches disabled athletes, but even he admits that Damo is kind of special. When I first walked up to that van and, uh, and I saw this fella sitting there with two legs missing and a snowboard laying in front of him, <laughs> I was shocked. I was, I was really shocked. You'd never know, would you? Look at him now, you'd never you know. Wouldn't you. know. Minus two legs. Yeah, and like, just look at it. He's just steering stilts. It's phenomenal. But your mates or your mum and dad, if they sat on this rock, they'd say, I don't believe it. Yeah, yeah, no doubt they would. Good mate. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, but I mean, that's sort of, that's what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, try, if, if, no one, if no one tried stuff and gave it a go, no one would get anywhere, you know? And fall over. Yeah, <laughs> fall over, get back up. I guess that's the... Knock this bloke down and he gets back it's up really again. On the slopes or in life. Yeah. 
I lie lost my legs, but I'd definitely rather me lose my legs than an innocent child or anyone for that matter. And I mean, that's the reason why we do what we do and don't ask for, for any recognition or anything of that sort. I mean, that's why I'm extremely proud of everyone in our Defence Force and the job that they do. He's lost both his legs. He's been uh, to hell and back, but he was there protecting us. Damien has begun a one-man campaign to raise money for Afghan war veterans, especially for the families of Aussie soldiers who don't come home, because he knows he could so easily have been one of them. The weekend tragedy of Trooper Jason Brown, the same age as Damien, brings the Australian death toll in Afghanistan to 18, with more than 140 injured. A situation where I realistically should be dead if it wasn't for dudes having the talent they did around me, which is something that, I mean, I'm going to be in debt to them forever for, so. A $10 levy, that's the motion. Anyone in favour? All, all in favour. All those in favour, can you raise your hands, fellas? Right. The Builders' Union, the CFMEU, pass around the heart. Thank you, boys. Kick-starting things with a $1,600 donation with much more to come. So we're going to support you, and I'll guarantee you, we'll give attention and we're going to make sure that you're looked after. Right, to see people being that patriotic, I mean, it makes me that proud to be an Australian. You can't ask more than that, can you? I mean, it's just so patriotic. It's a basic Anzac spirit, isn't it? But believe it or not, Damien now wants to swap the barracks for the battlefield once again. It's difficult to tell no, say no to Damien. You know, he's proven us wrong time and time again. I think there are going to be some challenges for him, no doubt. But Damien will always be a commando regardless. He's part of the family and always will be. But he says he wants to be a commando again. And everyone we talk to says, we wouldn't put anything past this bloke. I'd kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I'd kill him if he ever went away again, I think. <laughs> a plate of pasta and a glass of red at a beachside cafe you there. It's enough to remind Private Damien Tomlinson of an Aussie lifestyle that he says is worth fighting for. <laughs> Would I have done anything else? Hell no. No, I wouldn't change one bit of it. And I'm extremely proud of what I've done. I'm extremely proud of what these guys have done. I'm extremely proud of what every other guy that walks around wearing this beret does. They don't ask for thank you. They don't expect a thank you. They do it for people who can't do it for themselves. Can I say thanks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess you could yeah, say it to the whole lot of us. What made you do it? I just needed justice to be served. It's just sad that so many of my memories are punctuated by pain and shame and no one was there to stand up for me when I was a child. And here I had an opportunity to stand up for myself. I don't understand. I'm not quite sure what you're asking. I know what happened. God. I had my gotcha moment because his face dropped and I knew he'd been waiting for this day.